Hi, welcome to Blend the Clinic. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do uh, some very cool procedural uh, stylized boulders and rocks uh, or crystal formations if you want. Um, it's pretty easy, but I do keep crashing the computer because I'm getting overzealous with resolution. So <laughs> this is a, the billionth time I've tried to do this. Uh, Icosphere, add it up, give it some res, and, you know, uh, give it subdivision surface. And I think it's the subdivision surface in this that is actually causing me all the issues. Uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it there. Actually, I might just dial it up one more time. Risking crashes and all that fun stuff. Displacement. This is the core of the technique. Displacement. We're going to leave it all as default unless you want to change coordinates to global, um, which I can tackle in a minute uh, later. I'll tell you why that might be good. Um, but I'm going to change the image to... Uh, the generator from an image to Voronoi. I'm going to change actual distance to distance squared because uh, that stops these little pinchy little dots that you get in the Voronoi displacement. And I'm going to dial down the intensity. I'm going to dial up the size. And then dial some intensity back in. Let me get something like this. And that's, that's my rock, essentially. But... A couple of things about me rock. It's too high res. So what we're going to do is we are going to use decimate. I mean, use a planar decimation, <coughs> and it's going to take this poly count from silly to manageable. And I'm going to turn on my wireframe in the view so I can see what's what. I want these big planes to be a single face essentially if I can get that because this is not a hero asset this is a background asset I've got the sneakiest feeling I'm gonna crash the computer again maybe dial it up to 15 the angle limit we want minimal verts along these edges it's sometimes nice when it does these like little raggedy bits uh, but yeah 25 So there we go. So we've got a very low face count and quite a high poly count. Uh, it's quite a high vert count considering the amount of faces, but it, uh, it, it works. You've got this jaggediness that is quite interesting. And the further we go up, the more we lose of the interesting sort of stuff and the more broken bits we're going to get. So I'm going to take that back down to 20. Oh, and I should tick on all boundaries as well. That will definitely help. Yay, look at that. That is not a bad result. We have a very low poly, but very interesting shape. Admittedly, I don't know how well this would behave in other software because it's using a lot of engons, but we're going to stick a bevel on it. A bevel I can never get to work properly uh, for me. I'm going to give it a try. Uh, let me see. I'm going to say an amount of 0.18. I'm going to turn the limit method to none. And I think that should be enough for what I want. Do as I say. Come on, computer. And there we go. We've got, uh, you know, a few more polys along those edges just to, to stop the light sort of coming off it in a really horrible way. There's another thing you can do in cycles, which is add a bevel um, to, uh, to the shader. But that doesn't work in Eevee I don't think so unless that's changed in recent versions now what we could do on our displacement is change this to global and that means when we move it when we move the rock so if we create multiple instances of this it would come on you know you want to it changes how the face is displaced. Now, I'm going to actually, do you know what? I'm just going to get rid of this subdivision because it, it's clearly slowing us down so much. There we go. That's much better behavior. Um, and you can see what the, the global uh, coordinates are doing. But if we turn it back to local, you know, it's animatable, which is also useful. Uh, so a couple of tweaks. Things we've got a slightly lower res. Maybe we'll 
pull that up a little higher. You can get a very simple shape. Or we can dial it down a little lower, get some interest in there. And maybe we'll add another segment into there. No, I'm not I'm not happy with that at all. I didn't like I don't like it. I don't like it. Okay. And then we'll shade smooth. But we'll also go to auto smooth on the normals. We'll also go here, harden normals. And now we've got a fairly interesting rock. Uh, what we need to do, however, is add a shader in. Now, I suck at shaders, uh, so this is going to be um, probably a bloody great mess. But what I'm going to do is add in a Voronoi texture. And I'm going to just plug that into here. Well, actually, a wave texture might be good as well. Wave wave texture. We'll have some coordinates. Generated coordinates for both y'all. Actually, no, not for this one. For this one, I'm going to have geometry. And I'm going to take the normal and plug that into this. And now we get different colors based on the normal position. And what we'll do is make a ramp pop it in and we'll populate this with like the colors that we want the different faces of our boulder to be You can take a little more time with this, really figure out what you want to do. Um, ooh. Actually, we could just plug that directly in there and see what happens. Quite an interesting effect. Bear with. Yeah, just gonna try that a second. That works. Yeah, just we don't need the Voronoi in there confusing things further. We could turn this to constant. I just drag these down till they populate the area we want them to populate. What about true normal? Maybe not. Anyway, we could play with this all day, and maybe we will. But uh, you know, I'm just doing this to get some variance in the in the tones of the rock, so it's a bit more interesting. Okay, cardinal seems to work better for me. That's good. Maybe these higher contrast colors are less of a good idea. Path node. Uh, I'm not sure 100% what I'm doing here. I, I'm just experimenting.
I thought there was a random node, but apparently not. A random in here. Never mind, let's abandon that, uh, <laughs> that particular experiment. I suppose actually we could just um, just to get some of these away from the that side of the the ramp. We can multiply it a little bit. Whatever, it's all good, it's done. Um, that is going to have to do. So then we've got uh, a ramp again. Color ramps are quite expensive, computationally speaking, so this is probably a very inefficient renderer. I'm just going to change up this wave texture. That's interesting. Do you know, I've never considered what is the difference when you go from this normal to... Anyway, uh, back to this. We're just using Control shift uh, click to attach these to a viewer node. Um, so we can see what we're doing very quickly. Um, that's a feature that is only available in Node Wrangler, which is a free add-on, but is packaged with Blender. Go and turn it on. Uh, I'm sure everyone has covered that in every tutorial ever, so I don't think I need to do that again here, I hope. Anyway. I'm just going to use this a bit like that to create a gradient over which I'm going to put some colour. Mix. I'm going to mix this and that and then put it into here. Delay. Round. Okay, so that's looking pretty cool. Uh, what else do we need? What do I need indeed? Uh, so I want to do maybe some like proced procedural cracks you might want. Um, that's quite tricky because I'm, as I've said, I'm rubbish when it comes to doing uh, this sort of thing, but I'm gonna need mapping, uh, Voronoi, so noise to Voronoi, to add to Voronoi scale. Oh God, so this is gonna be a nightmare. Um, Sorry, I did all, I did a quick practice run beforehand, and I was sort of like looking at my nodes going, oh, God, what did I do 10 minutes ago? So we're going to have a mapping node, just in case we want to move stuff around later. Uh, and I'm going to have this set to distance to edge. Um, yet again and maybe what I'll do is uh, I'll affect the scale of this with another Voronoi so that goes into the vector, that goes into the scale, the vector comes back this one and I 
thing that I want. Yes, that's good. Uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll add a math node here so I can control the ceiling of that scale. That's good. Actually, that's looking quite interesting. Not quite doing what I wanted it to do, but I really like it, so that can stay. Uh, noise. We'll put some noise in, which is also just manipulating that vector. This is around there. Maybe take some distortion. There we go. And that is beginning to look a bit like a crank. Okay, so now we've got these procedural cracks that we can muck around with and we can, uh, you know, we can move them to the edges a little bit more to match our geometry if we want that sort of input. Obviously they uh, shift and bend out your way in a way that is, makes it very difficult to actually control. But, you know, such is life. Then I'm going to take another mix node, pop this on here. I'm going to multiply this. If I can find multiply. My squinty, beady little eyes. Um, and there we go. Yeah, so that's, that's good. That's going in. We should see that in a second. That's coming up. Slow to update this fella. Uh, oh, come on. It's only texture nodes. So the other thing I want to do with this, maybe change that to something slightly more colorful. And then I'm going to duplicate this color ramp, plug this into here, make a broader sort of thing that I can then take this and I can plug this into the roughness. And that should be just about all we need. So, um, although actually that said, yeah, that's way too shiny. So we're going to take the specular down. Maybe we'll use math node here. We'll multiply this. Turn that spec up so we can see what we're doing for a second. Do 
we want a minus one on here because I think we're just going to invert it and then subtract maybe so we can dull it down. Maybe we didn't want to invert it. Maybe I'm just dumb. Do, 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 do. Anyway, I don't think you're going to learn anything particularly important from me about uh, texture nodes because I'm just so bad with them, as you can see. This is not my finest hour. There we go. That's a bit better. Just to keep some interesting stuff happening with the texture there. I mean, the other thing we could do is just change the color of these so that they are not fully black or fully white. And as I said, we want to take that specular right the way down, turn the tint right the way up. And, uh, you know, maybe that crack is too visible for what we want. There we go. So we've got this sort of procedural rock going on. I'm not 100% happy with that, particularly the texturing. That kind of fell apart right there. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, and yeah, so that's uh, a way to make procedural rocks. And uh, let's put this back onto global and let's... Uh, Duplicate this, and now we've got a load of lovely Rocky Rouge. And you know, obviously, you can go in to these and uh, if I shift to duplicate this one, I can fail it and get different shapes. And there we go. So, yeah, it's a uh, it's far from uh, the most wow, but it, it's it was what I was aiming for. Except for this, look at that—that's horrible. Let's pull that down. Um, yeah, except for that. But again, I don't—I don't really uh, use too much uh, um, subdivision because it, it slows these things down quite badly. Um, but they're you know it's fairly versatile. Uh, <laughs> Ah, nervous, nervous chuckling. But yeah, that's so that's that's the idea. So that's what we're going to be using just to, to make some background assets for um, for our stylized, funky little world. Um, I'm still I'm still playing with them. I'm just I'm just creating little little jobbies. Yeah, we jobbies, and uh, yeah, you know. That, that that works. So I don't know what where to go from there. Um, it, it certainly beats manually sculpting these rocks out and having these very high poly assets in at the end of the day. I mean, obviously you could use parts of this technique in conjunction with a uh, a high poly sculpting sort of setup, but I think that's that's quite a good way of getting uh, getting some stuff done. Um, you know that's. That's a little rock formation, that is. Well, hey, actually, I wonder just whilst we're here. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I might cut here, but uh, so, uh, yeah. But <laughs> just as another idea, why don't I subdivide this? Make it a hundred, and we'll give it uh, some fractal noise, and only along the normal uh, to create some lumpy land. Maybe we'll take this down to 10, actually, to create the lumpy land. And then we will subdivide again. Mm. 
And we won't go fractal so much this time. And then maybe what we could do with this is is, is very much the same sort of thing. We could um, displace it uh, with Voronoi. And we could just do it along as the axis, maybe. Normals. I'm just experimenting with what what would happen if we took this technique to a different kind of form. So this is this is you know, ground plane basically, and we can decimate that planar all boundaries twenty. And certainly interesting. Uh, I don't know that it's it's what I would use, um, but it definitely gets you that sort of. Um, what we're hoping for is is quite a painterly feel to to the animation we're doing at the moment. And um, I wonder if I put the rock texture on that. There we go. Um, so yeah, we're looking for quite a painterly feel. This might be quite a good starting point for that. Um, yeah, not a hundred percent convinced by the uh, by all of that jazz. I don't know that we need uh, much going on there. Interesting, interesting. So yeah, I suppose that could always be baked down, then we could add some shrubbery assets and whatnot. But uh, yeah, I think that is, um, it's certainly a starting point. If you're looking for uh, procedural stylized landscapes and stones and stuff, that sort of technique can work quite well. Uh, I hope it's useful to you and if not just you know call me a dickhead in the comments that's fine uh, seems to be part of the course nowadays lovely uh, have a good one and i'll catch you again